your men in contention. Two hundred meters to go. Tefera tries to raise his game, can't match Cherry. That is a real shock. Stuart McSwain there in the, uh, the warm-up area. He'll be going later on in the 1500 it, meters in great form. It's the only call-up room in the world that I know has such a lovely... Here we are then, the men's 1500 meters on the far side of the track and uh, a chance to see for the first time in 2021, Timothy Chariot, the world champion. Really looking forward to seeing him go here. Very good field. Many of them have run fast here in Doha in the past, not to mention, of course, the world championships themselves and pace being set by Eric Savinsky in sign of uh, Kenya. It's a very quick pace. Your chariot has not been beaten at 1,500 metres since we were here for the Diamond League in, in the beginning of World Championship year. So May 3rd, 2019, he went through the rest of the season unbeaten and he won, ran 3.29 in that World Championship final. There's Stuart McSwain. He's, uh, had such a big year, a new Australian record in 2020, looks in good form in 21 as well. And then this man, rather surprisingly, uh, representing his home country here of Qatar, leads the world rankings at the minute, Adam Ali Musab, who we saw run in the cold and the wet of Gateshead. I'm sure he'll enjoy these conditions much more. Elba Kali couldn't get out of Morocco. He was meant to run the steeplechase in Gateshead. He's here in Doha, the steeplechaser. And then the very experienced Australian Ryan Gregson on the inside, amongst others here to watch out for his teammate Matt Ramsden in this as well, Vincent Kibet, Ronald Musagala, and uh, Bethel Bergen, and Samuel Tefera. And some of the names I've just been mentioning, there's Musagala. I'm not quite sure I'm seeing Tefera. Oh, there he is. I was wondering where he was. So Tefera, 21-year-old, world indoor champion from three years ago. Men's 1500. Well, let's hope the pacing, they've got a couple of very experienced pacers here. Eric Savinsky is normally pretty good at hitting the marks. He'll ask for around about 151, and uh, we'll get an idea, won't we? We've seen Faith Kip, Kip Yegon in that 800 meters show that she's in uh, fantastic form. First time out is Timothy Cherry going to show us something similar. He's just sat off at the moment. Uh, others go chasing the pace. Tefera moving up. Chariot with that familiar forward lean. There he is, following Stuart McSwain. As they come through the first 300 metres, around about 40 seconds, tad quick, but you've got to get them stretched out, got to get them moving. Savinsky will just settle down a little bit, looking for something around about 55, 56 seconds. And uh, Chariot now slotted nicely into his rhythm behind the tall Australian as they come round. Complete 400 metres, 44.30 for the pacemaker, and make Chariot round about 55, 55 and a half. Well, it'd be interesting to see how Chariot sets out his stall here. He'll have watched, I'm sure, with interest, uh, Jakob Britson in Gateshead last weekend, as we keep saying, in, well, couldn't be more different conditions, and uh, that was a brilliant performance by Inga Britson, Inga Britson and uh, Chariot talking very bullishly, said he'd love to go under 3.30 here this evening, but uh, he's... Uh, just stalking McSwain at the moment. McSwain's the one who won here in 2020. It wasn't a full Diamond League event, ran just outside 3.30 for that Australian record, and so he'll be hoping to try and emulate that performance here, but they are going quick here. They'll be up to sign to try and keep this moving. Look how well stretched they are. Tefera following with McSwain, then Chariot, then El Bacali, the steeplechase specialist, and then behind him, the world lead this year, Musab from Qatar. So they go through 800... Let's see, 150.77 spot on, they were asked for 151, so the pace is good, it's fast, it's very fast. And uh, Chariot tucked in behind McSwain at this point. Now, can Sign keep this going? Well, McSwain is so aggressive, isn't he? He's always a joy to watch. What a contrast in style there, and Chariot just with that forward-leaning style, instantly recognisable. And El Bacali just uh, lurking. We don't really know much about El Bacali's form at the moment. As you say, couldn't get to Gateshead last weekend.
So it's Tefera who now leads this because the pacemaker has had enough. He can't keep this hot, hot pace going. And Chariot looks comfortable. McSwain working hard. El Bacali hanging on. And these are well ahead of the world lead. Musab of Qatar has a big gap now. And Bergen starting to move up. But 2.34 at the bell. The 3.30 well on the cards here. Four men in contention. Now it's about winning it. Look at El Bacali looking feisty and looking dangerous. McSwain on the inside as Chariot moves up on Tefera. Tefera trying to hold him off 248 through 1200 meters and a fast time is on if chariot can finish this off Tefera lets him move to the front a little sly glance from chariot to see if there's any threat on the outside none appearing at the moment it's chariot the world champion 200 meters to go mcswain is still there el bacali looks as though his race has run needs to hang on for a fast time chariot hasn't got this one though Tefera sticking to him like glue as they come into the home straight just a meter between them chariot another look behind tefera tries to raise his game can't match chariot and chariot just extends away mcswain fighting for second place but it's timothy chariot will it be under 330 it's going to be close just outside mcswain gets second melba carley third tefera fourth bergen comes in for fifth and then the others running in through and around 34 35. well tim chariot can I call him Tim? I always call him Timothy. Let's stick with Timothy. Timothy, well done. First one out. It's you know when you can come out first race, bang, 3:30, low 3:30s. Well done, McSwain. I mean, for McSwain, I'd have to check, but I suspect that's his second fastest ever. So knows and shows that he can stick with Chariot in a hard race until that last 50, 60 meters when he is so strong. Well lead for the world champion. Well, it's quietly impressive, isn't it, Chariot? Just unfussy. And goes about his business. I've just got the sense that he had a little bit more in reserve. It was only, what, in the last 80 metres or so, he just started pulling away from the rest. Almost imperceptibly, really. Just increasing the tempo, the cadence. Not really seeming to be working very hard at all. This way coming through, always a joy to see him. And that's very impressive indeed. So both Chariot and Inga Britson in successive Diamond League races on successive weekends, making winning starts to their season.